For me, the, the definition of entrepreneur is a really broad one. I think someone who is an entrepreneur is a person who is innovative and creative and comes up with a different way to do something. I mean, most, most traditional respects, an entrepreneur is someone who um, starts a new business, or to, but now I think it's become someone who's, who's been really innovative in an organization period. So you could be in a, an entrepreneur in a really large company um, where maybe you help introduce a new product or a new process or a new division or a new market. Or I think a lot of those have a, a lot of entrepreneurial kind of qualities. My entrepreneurial background, I have undergraduate degrees in marketing communication and graduate degrees in entrepreneurship and small business management. Um, my first jobs out of undergraduate was run a small fashion accessory company with seven employees and about two million dollars in sales. So I was responsible for sales, marketing, um, doing purchasing, I was doing accounts payable, accounts receivable, and eventually hired a, a team to work under me to help manage that. Um, so buying and, and managing inventory and all those kinds of things. Went back, got my masters, and then went there to work for some companies that were manufacturing companies but ended up either running um, you know, sort of their groups, their divisions, um, which was very entrepreneurial because although I worked for them and had a really good paycheck for them, for instance, I worked for a company called Alimed, who had medical products, and I ran the ergonomics division. So it was my responsibility to pick the products, to order, the, make the recommendation, recommended quantities to order. I would put the products and write the copy for the, for the catalogs. We did, were a mail order catalog company at the time. I would decide um, how to write it, how to market it. I would build up the co-op. I put the co-op plans together, and I would decide who get the publications. Um, I would do pricing, I would do sort of do everything you would do as a business owner. So, um, and that was pretty interesting. Um, when I moved up from Massachusetts to here, I also worked in, in companies that were small to mid-size and then I always end up introducing any of the new product lines or new, or new marketing opportunities for new um, markets like introducing, taking headsets and putting it in truck driver marketplaces um, and, or going to retail or those kinds of things. Um, and then more recently worked at a company that introduced uh, wireless communications products to fast food restaurants. Um, and then joined my husband in a startup insurance agency. So it's been products for all different markets, um, both manufacturing and distribution, and now uh, actually in, um, service products. Um, for me, that's been terrific because it's been a wide variety of experiences. So I've had to deal with finance issues, I've had to deal with accounting issues, I've had to deal with HR issues, marketing issues. Um, I've had to deal with hiring and firing. I've had to deal with building business plans and, and trying to raise money. Um, I've also had to deal with day-to-day -day operations and managing customer service or sales teams or those kinds of things. So it gave me a really wide um, variety of experiences, which has been fabulous. I don't know that I can think of off the top of my head specific failures mm -hmm. um, that really impacted me, you know, those big moments where you're like, oh my gosh. Um, mm -hmm. But do I think that we had things that didn't work so well? Absolutely. Um, were, there, were there kinds of programs we put in place and tested that didn't work? Yeah. Um, were there markets that were better than others? Yes. Did I learn how to improve my process or improve my ability to, to qualify things or ask the right questions or, or do the right research? and balance that between doing, doing research and getting information with making good decisions relatively quickly. Um, because sometimes you can get so, so stuck in the detail that you don't make decisions. So it's finding that balance of when you feel like you know enough to make a good guess and a, and a good judgment. Um, and then you just do your best from there. So castle so insurance is interesting. It's, um, it's a relatively young insurance company. We're only a couple years old. So um, the insurance industry is very old. Um, it has been around for a really long time. A lot of people work with insurance agents who are sort of, you know, their grandparents' age. And there you have traditional filing cabinets with, you know, office space and people come in and pay cash and pay their bills. Um, we don't manage our business that way at all. Um, what we see ourselves as is a sales and marketing company. So what, what we see that is is that we're, our opportunity is to really provide exceptional service and exceptional education for our clients, um, and that's what makes them come to us. So some of the things we do differently is um, 
we are very technology focused. We have really great cutting edge systems. Everything's electronic. It's electronic coding, it's electronic emails, everything's texting or emails or um, you know, shared through, I even share things through social media sometimes when it's appropriate. And then we um, even have electronic document signatures. So everything's really easy for, the, for our, our prospects and our clients. And I think that's really important that we, we know that it's important in this day and age to make everything really simple. But we also know that people want to have a local relationship. So they may not want to come into our office. We don't do cash payments like some offices do. Um, but they want to know that they can reach us when they need to. And they do. And they'll text us and they'll call us. And they'll and people will come in if they want to and come say hi, but they really don't need to. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an option. Um, but I think by making sure that we take the time to really build that rapport and build that relationship um, makes a huge difference. So in five to ten years, that goes really quick. Um, I see us having a couple more employees. I'd like to see us have a little more flexibility as entrepreneurs. Um, right now my husband and I own the agency, which means we're, one of us is there because we're the two licensed agents currently. Um, one of us is always there during business hours pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, we do have someone who works for us, but he can't do certain things because he's not licensed. He can't talk about coverages and can't bind policies. Um, so it would be nice to have a couple people covering so we could eventually get to the point where we have a little bit of freedom. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I see the agency being a little bit bigger, but we're really not looking to be huge. You know, we don't want to take over the state. We don't want to be the elite agency. We want to be profitable. We want to be successful, but we still want to make sure that we're providing really good value mm -hmm. to our clients. So we have a, um, I guess we're going more for quality than volume. And, um, and we want good, solid clients who want to have nice relationships with their insurance agents and offer as many products as we can to the same clients. We want their homes and their autos and their businesses and their boats and their snowmobiles, and we want to be their one-stop shop mm -hmm. and know that we're going to take really good care of them um, as opposed to being the shop that maybe saves them six bucks a month mm -hmm. for one product and then they're with somebody else for another product, and, and we don't want to be that player. Um, so the next five years, I think it's going to be really, really solidifying that. We're growing right now really quickly. Um, which means we're swamped and we're busy and we're, you know, it's exciting, but eventually we'd like to have a little bit of a personal life. Mm -hmm. um, ten years, hard to say. I have kids in, in high school that are going to be going off to college that may have an interest in business. Um, that's an option, mm -hmm. you know, whether they, they get involved or, you know, at some point do we ever consider selling and, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I, that's not in the short run plans at all. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a, a nice business that we can run for a really long time and do a good job at. I have a few pieces of advice for aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, one, um, integrity. Always keep your integrity. Always do what your gut's telling you is the right thing to do. It, it will pay off in dividends over time. Um, listen to your gut. Uh, listen to that intuition. Listen to that feeling that something feels right or doesn't feel right. And, um, and act on it uh, pretty quickly because you usually know. Um, something in the back of your head's telling you something that's not a good fit, it's not a good fit. And if somebody's telling you it's going to work and everyone else is telling you it's not, it might work because you might be the one that makes it happen. Mm -hmm. um, so it's some of those, those, those intangible things and also know where you're good and where you're not good. So know where your skills lie. Know where you need someone to come in and supplement and be on your team and, um, and where you're sort of the, the expert in that area. So if you're an entrepreneur is to understand you know, who do you need to supplement, who do you need to work with. Um, who need you to, to balance you out so you're, you're a good team going forward to, to accomplish whatever your goal you've set. Yeah, I definitely wish I did some things differently. I think I stayed in jobs that I didn't love for too long. I think I worked for companies and people just because it was easy or convenient but I, I should have been more willing to take more risk and open and go to more opportunities more quickly. I mean, I worked for some good companies and within those companies, I definitely feel like I made the best of my experiences there and it definitely helped me get to where I wanted to go. And I stayed to some of the things that were really true to myself. I always wanted to work close to home. I wanted to be part of my community. I wanted to be local. I wanted, I'm not, I'm not big on 
for me, it wasn't all about travel and glamorous jobs and that kind of thing. I wanted, I wanted to sort of, I like small businesses where I can get my hands in all different parts of the organization, where I can get called into a meeting with finance and marketing and sales and engineering and ops all at the same time and see how all those pieces come together and be part of those, those discussions. Um, so I'm really fortunate in that way, but there were some organizations I think I maybe stayed too long. And, um, and I think that's, looking back, I'm sure I did it for a reason, and mm. I'm sure it all got me to where I am today. But I don't know if I, if I could do it again, and I think I might, have, I might give myself different advice.